Okay, there we go. Uh, thank you all for being here. And we'll uh, get through this agenda as quickly as we can. Um, uh, I apologize, but we do not have uh, minutes from the last meeting. Susan couldn't make it, and um, uh, but it is recorded. So if you uh, want to see that recording, it is on the Cherry Creek North uh, website and YouTube. Uh, not website, just our YouTube channel. So just go to YouTube, uh, search the Cherry Creek North Neighborhood Association, and you will find the recording of the last steering committee. So uh, with that, I see we have Councilwoman on the phone and uh, she was just chatting a little bit, but I'd like to turn it over to her to address the whole group. Well, thank you, Lou. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to see you. Um, I think I know most of you guys at this point, but Amanda Sawyer representing District 5 and so excited for you all to be joining us in a little, in just a couple of weeks. Um, so I was just saying to Lou, as everyone was kind of signing on, we're in this weird gray area still where Council Member Hines will be representing you until July 17th, and then I will take over. So I'm working on getting up to speed on um, all of the issues and things happening um, in the new neighborhoods that will be joining District 5 July 17th, which is Inauguration Day. Um, and some updates from our office. So I actually just walked in the door from the Colorado Municipal League um, Conference, which was really great. I was um, presenting on our gun buyback program that we did last year, which took almost a thousand weapons off of the street um, and talking with other cities and towns about how, um, if they are interested in doing something like that, they can, which is uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get some traction um, with that. And also I was elected to the executive board of the Colorado Municipal League. So very excited to be joining that group. CML is an advocacy organization that works with cities and, and towns across the state of Colorado to really make sure that there's kind of a unified voice in speaking with cities um, and advocating at the state level, um, particularly when it comes to issues of local control, which we're seeing a lot of issues. Um, I don't know if you read the paper yesterday, but there was a whole situation with the governor coming to CML and um, and uh, and doing a speech that did not go over well. Um, so I'm really excited to join that board and uh, and work and be Denver's voice in collaborating with cities across the state um, at the state level for advocacy. So uh, that's really exciting. In our office, um, we're gonna have a couple of staffing changes. So Jen has left our office. Um, one of council member Ortega's aides is actually gonna come and join our office on July 17th. Um, and her name's Nicole, she lives in Lowry, which is really great. So. Um, you guys will be getting a chance to meet her and then Logan and Owen and Juan will um, be remaining. So um, I think you guys have all had a chance to meet them, but um, just a few changes as we kind of move towards inauguration. Um, a lot of people have been asking questions about the new mayor and the new mayor's plans, and I don't, I don't have any answers for you. Um, I have not even met with him yet. I meet with him tomorrow. We have about an hour on the calendar and I have I have a lot of questions and I have a lot of concerns based on um, the uh, committee um, assignments that have come out. Um, I don't see very many people on there who live east of Broadway. And I think that's really concerning. Um, it looks to me like the west side of the city is very well represented and the east side of the city is not. Um, and that doesn't make for an inclusive conversation. So it's be a little bit of a tough conversation tomorrow. Um, I did meet one of his committee chairs, uh, at dinner at CML on Tuesday night. And, um, she said, if you had one question to ask, what would it be? And my answer was, where's the money? And she said, well, what do you mean? And I said, where's the money coming from for all of the plans that you seem to have? Um, and it, it was a, it, it was a tough conversation because they don't have an answer for that right now. And that's very concerning. Um, so I'm working on it, but uh, this mayoral transition is uh, a little chaotic, I would say. And um, I am 
going to do my best to try and smooth that chaos over and, and get people the information that they need in order to be successful um, in this transition, because that matters to all of us. Um, so I think, you know, that's about it. There's lots going on. Um, and I'm just looking forward to catching up with you all. I do have to run um, a little bit early because our UINTA traffic study final recommendations meeting is tonight at six o'clock. So you'll see me jump off. And unfortunately, my staff is helping to produce that. There's a lot that goes on on Zoom on the back end for those kinds of things. Um, so uh, we, I'll be heading out in just a few minutes, but wanted to come and say hello and uh, check in with you all and listen to the updates of from everyone else of what's going on and looking forward to um, finally officially taking you guys on as part of District 5, July 17th. Great, and thank you for being here. And we're so excited to have you. You've, you've been at many of our meetings, so um, it, it is not a surprise, I'm sure, to uh, see these faces. Um, and um, so we'll look forward to that. And I understand you have to run um, early, so we'll try to get on with this. But I did wanna just, um, I saw <clears throat> I saw Councilman Hines' aide here. Where, oh, there she is, Haley. Hi, and uh, she's been very good about um, joining us um, for years now. And this will be her last representative meeting, but you're always welcome to attend. Uh, Councilman Hines um, uh, was gracious in always making sure either, you know, someone was was here. Our districts um, have been, are, are together. So uh, there are other members of the steering committee uh, are their neighborhoods that are in Councilman Hines district. So while we will bid you adieu as our official Cherry Creek representative, um, the Cherry Creek steering committee is uh, overlapping. So we hope you will continue to join us. Um, and do you have anything you want to add right now, Haley? Um. Not really, other than, you know, it's been an honor. I grew up in Cherry Creek and um, yeah, it's been an honor to serve you all. And I'm really sad that we're losing this area. But um, if I had to pick a council person to take this district, it would definitely be Councilwoman Sawyer and her staff. Uh, they are some of my favorite people to work with. Don't tell anyone else in the city that. Um, but yeah, you're And this is being on. recorded, but hey. <laughs> anyone watching this, don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, no, it, it's it's just been an honor. So um, I'm really excited to see what happens next to this neighborhood. And, um, you know, I'm still a constituent. So I guess I could come just as a constituent. Um, but yeah, if you need anything in the next month, please feel free to reach out. Um, most of my areas we are losing to, um, you know, D5 and D7. So I am still all hands on deck for them while they're here. Great. Thank you very much. And again, thanks for being here. And yeah, you live in Cherry Creek. So um, continue to come anytime uh, you want and uh, thank Councilman Hines for us as well. Um, okay, so we are going to jump in um uh to reports i don't see jeremy here but we have richard so uh richard please tell us um i know you're getting ready for the arts festival and Absolutely. just getting back from vacay so and, and a lot going on you know it's a busy summer for us right now so just on neighborhood beautification we um we've pulled the majority of the dead plant material out replacement plant material is going to be coming in um, we've highlighted what i'm going to call the uh the F beds, if we go A through F, we have some uh, planning areas that just don't look the best. So I've got proposals coming in for those and we're getting ready to do all new plantings in all those areas. Um, we're replacing 37 trees this year. Um, we thought it would be more and it might end up being more. We're really struggling on Steel Street with some trees, but uh, we have 37 that are getting replaced right now. But fortunately, um, working with Forestry, we had some of the really big trees that were up off 3rd Avenue that were starting to break branches and they weren't healthy. So we actually got ordered to remove a few of them once they were inspected. So um, I hate to lose the big trees, but unfortunately that had to happen for safety's sake. Um, we're about 50% done, uh, maybe a little less than that with the LED conversion on the pedestrian light poles throughout the district. So you will notice a, a much brighter light out there giving us a little bit better light in the neighborhood. So we're excited about that. Um, that was a that was a job that was three years in the making to get it funded and, and get it um, get it across the finish line. So we're really excited to have that new lighting in the neighborhood. Um, other than that is kind of all hands on deck for the Arts Festival this weekend. 
As everybody knows, we have a new layout. They will not be on Third Avenue this year, but they will go out of the district uh, down to Adams on Second. Um, but we're just excited to get kind of tuned up and ready for that and, and get through that and then launch into the rest of our summer events. Richard, will they have the bike storage at the Arts Festival this year? I believe they do. And, and I will come back to that. Let me pull up a map here in a minute um, and I will see. But they usually have a bike corral. And if I remember right, just from off the top of my head, I think it's going to be down by Adam Street. But I will check real quick. Okay. Thank you. I hope to see you all there. Um, it's warm, so we always go early. So, um, you know, let's hope it's a really successful one again this year. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see anybody from the mall. So um, we are going to just go ahead and dive into around the room a little bit. I did want to say um, uh, just a couple quick things. I know Jenny is here and I know that Amy Carroll was going to uh, join us. Uh, there she is. There she is. She's here. Um, as we go around the room, I just wanted to acknowledge um, uh, the the email uh, that Bob sent around, um, and uh, and Buzz had sent me an email after the last um, steering committee, and I just want to make sure everybody understands that when we have presenters here, um, I know everybody is really gracious. We welcome them. We listen to them, but we have not taken any positions, very few positions, except with respect to our request for um, sort of a rethink and a redirection on Denver moves. Uh, when we did come together, we did um, circulate a letter. We, um, Richard is and uh, Stuart who is here, um, we have been a small group with Denver moves and really felt like we had to bring that back to the steering committee and uh, speak with a more unified voice, which we have an, an opportunity to do on this committee. Um, having said that, um, while we allow presenters, we, we have not taken any position on anything else, actually, as far as um, going forward on this. So um, when we did have the presentation uh, by Amy uh, last time on uh, Cherry Creek West, um, it was a presentation for everyone. Uh, whether the steering committee takes a position in the future right now, there isn't anything right now to, uh, frankly, to take a position on. Uh, we may or may not. These presentations are uh, meant in part to help educate the RNOs that uh, sit at this table and to make sure that we are um, aware of the biggest issues that affect uh, the, the neighborhood. Um, and as we have been on many other large issues, the, the adoption of the Cherry Creek area plan, uh, moving forward with the rezoning of the bit, moving forward with these large projects that impact our neighborhood. But we really haven't done that. So um, I want to acknowledge Buzz, your concern. I don't speak for the steering committee. If we take a position, we'll take it together. If we decide that this is something better left to the RNOs, we will do that. Um, but I don't think we're even at that point. Uh, but I do acknowledge that um, some of the neighborhoods may be already speaking about it. Um, it's just that right now, um, I. I I just wanted to confirm that's not where we are. And I wanted to give Amy just a quick opportunity to follow up to make sure I didn't say anything wrong about that um, and where she is in that process. Thank you, Lou. And sorry that I'm late um, to today. There's a, a lot of things going on in this city today. <laughs> um, and Timing I is perfect. For, I apologize for any background noise here. Um, I'm trying to be a couple places at once, but um, I, I appreciate that, Lou. I, I think my goal really in coming to the steering committee is it's the opportunity to reach out to the really the people who are representatives of so many committees. And it is this is not the only touch point that I wanna have with all of you. If any of you want me to come and speak um, to your boards, I'm happy to do that. Um, we have, um, in fact, spoken with the Country Club Historic Neighborhood in the past, um, would be happy to come back out to that. 
Um, we're coming to speak to Cherry Creek East on um, the 18th. Um, we can come back here to the steering committee um, on the 26th. And then importantly, we're having an open house on August 1st when, um, and I think many of you probably have seen the postcards come out for that, when you can have the opportunity to come in and learn about and ask questions and provide feedback on any components of this. But we're a long, long way from rezoning still. Uh, the process at the city is, is it, it's extensive and this is a big site that needs a lot of consideration. And so, um, we will continue to come here so that you know what the updates are when they're happening. And if you want to want to learn more and let your let your teams know more, you can do that. Um, and then I without I should note, I'm also coming out to the country or sorry, the Cherry Creek Neighborhood Association um, on August 18th or 15th as well. So um, you know, to that end, I, we want feedback. We want to hear from all of you about um, any questions and concerns that you have about Cherry Creek West, but um, it is pretty premature um, because we do not yet have a fully formed um, agreement um, to even react to with the city. So um, that's really all I was going to add to that. Thanks, Luke. Great. Thank you. Um, so um, with that said, if that has been your focus in your neighborhood. You're welcome to talk about, but there is a lot going on. And so uh, let me just turn it over to you, Bob, for Country Club Historic District first, maybe, if, or Buzz, whoever wants to uh, speak to uh, what's going on in the Country Club r &O and and how that is relating to uh, the Cherry Creek um, Steering Committee. I'm happy to take it, Lou. <clears throat> I've been on both sides of the table, uh, both for Lou's benefit and Amy's as a developer and as an architect. And <clears throat> almost without exception, in response to Amy's question or comment, uh, I would rather get the feedback earlier than later. There's nothing worse than being in construction documents and having a whole bunch of folks show up at city council in a bus. And so, the reason, although it's been a bit of a moving target, you've presented once <clears throat> with the bridge over Cherry Creek Drive North and once without, but the essential elements <clears throat> of the project have remained the same. And that's largely density. And I don't know how many of you were there. I know uh, Nick Lamasters was and perhaps Alan was, but I don't recall. Alan can act further. But when we did the area plan for the uh, for, for Cherry Creek, and I believe it was the summer of 2012 at a particular meeting, I missed an initial meeting for that, but the heights were discussed. And it was not exactly a definitive or well thought out height uh, concern uh, or meeting. I walked into the meeting having missed the first one, as I said, and there were post-it notes stuck on a very large map of Cherry Creek. And there were 12 story post-it notes all over Cherry Creek. And, and perhaps Jeannie was there too. I'm not sure if Jeannie was involved at that point, but uh, it, was, it was more of a wish list, Lou and Amy, than it was a directive. And as you all know, following that master plan of 2012, the Cherry Creek North zoning was studied and restudied and massaged and remassaged to define exactly what that meant. I went around that night and put five stories on everything because it was a wish list. It was, you know, and I'm kind of that way. But uh, as it turned out, um, uh, the battle on Cherry Creek West was not imminent and was just perhaps a reach too far to fight that battle at that time. And Nick was hoping he could get 12, of course, for the Talbot group, but uh, we weren't sure exactly who the ownership was or whether it was under leases or exactly, and maybe Amy could tell us further what, what the ownership is of the state of her lease, but it was really kind of an arbitrary height limit set. And of course the city was there and they were very, very interested in additional growth and Cherry Creek was the low hanging fruit and they were seriously short of tax base. And so it went, the city then put it in the master plan as, you know, as 
uh, sort of, you know, this is what it kind of looks like. And if I'm about uh, sp if I'm speaking inappropriately or inaccurately, please speak up and let me know. But uh, from that point, uh, our our neighborhood has seen one presentation from East West. I believe, Amy, you can correct me. And I know you've offered to, and we're more than willing to be with you at any time. But it was our feeling at the board that the 12 story, 13 story, seven story, eight story density of the project was excessive. It was quite a reach from the three story zoning that's on the B3 uh, uh, development plan zoning presently. And to, to one of the tests for zoning is has the surrounding area changed in nature and, and all. And it certainly has with the intensity of development in Cherry Creek North. The intersections at First and University have gone from about a level B minus to C down to about a level D approaching F. If you have to go through an intersection, you sit there through two cycles, it's an F. And that's about where you are on First Avenue, especially headed west on to, uh, on to one of the other, uh, or, uh, primarily university. And so uh, the, the, it has changed. The density and the development in Cherry Creek North has had a huge impact on it. And whether or not the city can make arrangements or the developer can make arrangements to mitigate the impacts, especially for a project, the magnitude. And I don't recall, Amy, how large the site is in acres, but I think it's about, well, it's somewhere around 10 plus or minus five. 13. 13. 13. Okay, that was, I remembered 17 and I knew that wasn't right. And the uh, square footage of your development, uh, I don't recall hearing in the residential office and commercial uh, areas. And you may have a total square footage uh, in mind with the, uh, I'm not quite sure what stage you're in, if it's still pretty much in the conceptual kind of eyewash stage or whether it's you know, firming up considerably, but uh, we felt it was, it, it was, it would be a disservice to you not to let you have kind of a general sense of where our board was. Now, in response to Lou's email to me, no, we have not polled all the residents of Country Club. And I'll bet Lou hasn't polled all the country, all of the residents of Cherry Creek North. You almost can't do that because you could poll the members, but you can't poll, poll all the residents. And I'm sure the other neighborhoods surrounding us haven't polled all of their residents. But again, it would be a disservice to let you know that we were not happy with the densities proposed and do it as soon as we had an opportunity. And that was such a moving target that we really haven't had anything to respond to. And still, as you pointed out, what are we responding to? Well, honestly, we don't know other than it's dense. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the initial response, and I'll happy to answer questions if you have a, have further. Interest. But I would like to know the status of the property, whether it is still. I think the Buell prop, the Buell uh, uh, Corporation or group still owns foundation. the property. Foundation, Buell. The Buell Foundation. Okay, and uh, I don't know. Have you finalized a lease on the property yet? I suspect that won't happen until you have your plans in place. We do have a lease um, it, that is finalized. Um, it's taken years for us to do it, um, but yes, the lease is in place. Um, all of those agreements are in place. I can answer sort of individual questions for you um, as it relates to um, you know the, the amount of square footage and so on, but I do still believe that um, the thing that is in best service of your, um, of your board as a whole is to give a uh, presentation that's a more complete one, like the one that I did um, back, I don't know how long ago it was, but Griffin was chair at that time when I walked through the whole plan and right. what um, what the benefits of the density are that allow um, some of the public benefits that we're providing that individual buildings do not provide, um, as well as some of the mitigations um, that we have there. So. Um, I can certainly answer individual one-off questions if, if that's what you'd like me to do, but I do think it would be beneficial for your full board to, you know, and any of the other residents, honestly, to hear that, hear the full story, because I think that last steering committee meeting was sort of a response to change as opposed to the full picture, and the densities have really remained the same 
um, throughout the process. So and that, that's why our early response is the densities have remained much higher than even Cherry Creek North is presently. And the system can't handle what we've got presently adequately. How, uh, many square which, feet, which, how many square feet of development are you proposing at this point? Do you have a rough idea? Yeah, so we are the same roughly million and a half square feet of density that we have been since we initially proposed this this plan. Um, it's hard to look at a number like that um, sort of by itself because obviously when you look at um, the sort of groupings of other buildings that are coming up under other developers at any given time, those you know also are significant numbers. Um, but what it is, is seven buildings as it has been in the past, a mix of residential and office that helps to bring, I think a lot of when the, and you know, again, Jeannie, tell me otherwise, because you were there at this moment, but speaking with planning directors, as I've been for the last eight years um, about this, the thinking has really been that by adding additional density of office and residential that you start to really create that 15 minute community that allows people to work here who live here and live here, who work here. And the addition of the 12% affordable housing that we're doing on the site um, also means that people who are working here today that can't afford to live in Cherry Creek could do so, um, which will take some additional burden off of the roads um, that exist today. And in addition, the additional density will mean that the city and RTD will be willing to increase the amounts of transit that are provided today, which, as you know, are currently horrendous um, at a half an hour or an hour in some cases between um, between visits to the to the area and certainly not something that a commuter can rely on. So, um, you know, that plus the pedestrian orientation, the fact that we're doing much more open space than is required um, under city plans um, for large scale developments and much, much more than is asked of an individual building. Um, suggests that doing a plan that is sort of a larger scale like this um, has a lot of benefits that are maybe not um, visible if all you're thinking about is the density, but we are doing mobility studies. Dottie is reviewing all of those things. They have them in hand. Um, and we look forward to continuing to work through um, what this is, but we are certainly not, um, since those intersections are already E's and F's today, we are not the only people creating that traffic. Um, we haven't created it yet. Um, so lots needs to be considered there. And some of this, well, I think, I'm just, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Bob. Did you no, have- Go ahead, Lou, really. I, I'll okay, I just wanted to, um, I, I wanted to weigh on on just a couple quick things. So um, Jeannie was obviously involved in the area plan and I think others on this call were, were as well, I was. Um, and um, we had at, at the time of the area plan, we had 12 stories going up at at steel on, on three sides and the thought was it should be 12 uh, on the mall side too. So if you look at the area plan, it is. And talked a lot about not wanting that, you know, wanting Cherry Creek to remain unique, not like downtown, not these big tunnels, but that the mall areas would be a better place for 12 stories because they wouldn't be blocking views. Now, maybe some of the people, the condos <laughs> on the south were would have that issue, but it, if there were 12 stories, it's better on those peripheral because we have 12 stories at, at, at the Laurel condominiums. We have 12 stories at, at uh, Coda. We have 12 stories in the apartment building, which is Steel Creek. So it's not like this is going up, but we did. And I I, I will tell you, um, and I'll just segue to it right now for Cherry Creek North, we are fighting hard to keep our zoning in the bid because there are, uh, and immediately east of the bid, there are two rezonings that we are fighting vigorously um, to keep the zoning of five stories. And this is the um, area that the Waldorf Astoria uh, wants to go up from five to eight stories. And um, this is something we're fighting because um, first of all, all those Laurel residences 
we're sure this is going to stay five stories and um, and we think that's the right thing to do unless they want to use the affordable housing uh, law and go up. So maybe we really could have a, a, a teacher or a, or a restaurant manager be able to live in the neighborhood, but we're fighting very hard to keep that five stories. Um, that said, our, our, our position on this is that that is the area plan and, a, and the zoning was adopted pursuant to the area plan. So while the zoning is not, uh, and, and by the way, one of the other things that we have said, and I think everybody in, in our area understands is that infrastructure support has not kept up with the, the, the area plan zoning and the up zoning, which has occurred throughout the neighborhood and certainly in the bid. So that's Denver Moves Cherry Creek. We've asked, um, you know, we've got, both developers on either side of first that are, uh, you know, we have an ask and uh, the city will have an ask about how to uh, deal with those issues. We also, there is also a new ordinance that says that if you are building X number of square feet of new, whatever, what, if it's, if it's a smaller project, you won't be hit with this, but if it's a larger project, and you're putting in X square feet of office and retail and residential, you've got to have transit offsets on how you're going to deal with some of that. So a lot of this is so early, we don't know what those are, but it's it's merging um, on First Avenue and, um, and University with these concepts of how do we deal with the transit issues. Will this really result in having better transit? And uh, and 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 Stewart and others can talk about that when we get to, uh, to talk about Denver Moves Cherry Creek. But these are opportunities to better our infrastructure that was contemplated, not expressly because I've looked for it, as a part of the um, the discussion about our up zoning that we did pursuant to the area plan. That said, my recollection is not consistent on the 12 story. My recollection that it was a part of the discussion about the 12 story. And if you're gonna continue 12 stories, we were trying to make sure that the 12 stories that were approved on all those corners of steel and first, um, we're not carrying in the Paul's Corporation, of course, is also 12 stories, that that wasn't going to be carried forward in the bid. And to offset that, we went from 12, the highest point, to five to help merge that down. And then throughout the rest of the area, came up with that eight as it steps down. So the, the massing had air and generous and a, a quality of stepping down. But that if we were going to have any more 12 story, which we didn't want on the north side of first, that it would be better on the south side of first because you you wouldn't have that direct conflict. That said, we all understand that if you're going to add massing and you're going to add density, we're going to have to deal with the other infrastructure problems that are created now that there is that requirement that that happens that wasn't there a while ago. It is here now. And Stuart might be able to say a few words about that. But um, but I'm going to ask Jeannie, who's had her hand up, um, to weigh in on this as well, since she was our councilwoman at the time. Jeannie. Yeah, well, um, I basically just wanted to sit in, but I do want to say I have been unable to stop my interest in this proposed development because I feel like it was a really major part of what we worked on. And I have a, a sense of responsibility of wanting to have the best in Cherry Creek still. So I would say, you know, what do we have on the steering? How many people? On the, we've got 20 people at least with 10 year old memories and we're all gonna see <laughs> Uh, what happened a little differently, but I sort of agree with Bob that we did not focus on this site. If you recall, 
people were very focused on Columbine. There was a pending rezoning and we, it was just sort of on the piece of paper. Your memory, Lou, gives me more definition, um, but that wasn't foremost in my mind. Um, so I do think it was vague. And the other thing that has always troubled me about the form-based zoning and the way planning went is we say a maximum of 12 stories. If you were to take the whole Cherry Creek Mall site and make it a maximum of 12 stories, that would not be desirable in my opinion. And, and I will say for East West, I've liked the open space, the variety of height. When I talked to Amy, that was, I didn't want all the buildings at 12 stories and they shouldn't go over 12 stories. Um, one of the things I've been thinking about, it's so complicated to do a site like this because you got to time it with the infrastructure improvements and you've got to look, you got to keep looking towards the future. We all think the mall is going to be there forever, but give it another 10 or 12 years, who knows? And I would like to see as part of this rezoning coming forward, maybe our council people can look at well, if if there's 12 stories here, what happens on the rest of the site? Is, is it something that we should get some agreements on now as opposed to when it comes up in the future? Those, that I just wanted to address the height. I know a whole lot of other issues with the redevelopment will come along, so I'll stop there. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, and um, you know, zoning is... is an, an interesting animal where you've got the pressures. I know that um, Councilwoman Sawyer, I think maybe before you jumped on Jeannie, but had talked about, you know, that the the sort of shock and awe of, of uh, uh, Polis's remarks um, at the municipal conference and the municipal league. And um, I think, you know, we just need to understand also where uh, where the city is and um, and the fact that as a group we've been fighting for a long time for better infrastructure and help redoing things to make it work better, getting real reliable transit service to this area, maybe some commuters, maybe a you know we've all talked about a, a router uh, downtown that we could utilize, um, but we got to start adding that infrastructure in. Uh, Councilwoman Sawyer. Thanks, Lou. Um, I can't speak to any of the rezonings because they're filed and so that would be illegal. Um, but I did want to just mention briefly, since we're talking about this, um, that uh, I do think one of the things we should consider as a community is the idea of creating a local improvement district. Um, a, a, or a general improvement district. There, there's a couple of different options, right? Or a special district at the state level. Um, but I do think there's an opportunity here for us to, you know, my my question is always, where's the money coming from? Um, and I think there's an opportunity for us to consider um, creating some sort of um, additional location, local improvement district, et cetera, where we could take those funds and invest them in the Terry Creek area in order to be able to pay for some of this stuff. Um, because waiting for the city to pay for it is going to it's not going to happen. And we've already seen that. Um, so the beginning of a very long conversation with lots of twists and turns, but I did want to mention it because I do think it's important for to flag that for everyone. I think it's a conversation we need to have. Um, and I think it's a conversation we probably need to start uh, in the next year or so um, with community. But I, I think this is something that we should consider as a potential um, solution to be able to find the funding to be able to actually implement some of the things that are coming forth in the Cherry Creek, Denver Moves Cherry Creek project um, and those kinds of things. Yeah. Yes. And, and I'll just say, I you and I have had these conversations and we'll continue to. Um, I think that's great, but right now, as um, and again, the rezoning on Cherry Creek West has not been filed, so you know, to distinguish that one a little bit. But to um, to sit down at the table since developers want to move forward, 
um, to be able to ask for that as a part of their project is a way not to transfer all that cost back on the taxpayers, frankly, and uh, which is where we would if we had a regular JID, but we could have a, a parking district, some other things. I know Stuart is an expert on those, but, you know, so we've got to look at um, what needs to happen now and what's fair and, um, and how we move forward with uh, the visioning that we've had where we haven't necessarily had that infrastructure catch up. Um, and can I just jump in really quickly sure. to just mention, um, so the city has also created a new um, ordinance that it allows developers to recoup some of the infrastructure investments down the line. Um, so it, it's kind of complicated and I've actually got to run to it, another meeting, um, but we can talk about it more in the future. I'm happy to discuss it with you, but recognizing that that is a challenge for, uh, you know, it is a requirement that we put on developers to help build out some of that infrastructure, um, as it should be, but also, um, for those kind of larger investments, um, you know, there, there is a, a plan in place an an opportunity, um, for those developers down the line to recoup some of that initial investment. So I did want to flag that for you as well, because it's a, it's a new ordinance and it's something that the, that the city is looking at, um, to start to address some of these issues as well. Thanks. I appreciate that. And I'll look you know, I need to, I need to bone up on that. So maybe you can send me a text where I can find that language. Um, but great. I know you have to leave, but I know you really want to stay. So you'll, uh, you'll be able to, um, if you can't sleep, you'll be able to watch this uh, later tonight when I get it uploaded. <laughs> but thank you for being here. Um, uh, Jeannie, do you want, did you want to uh, weigh in on some more of this? Your hand is still oh. up. Whoop. I just I just forgot to take my hand down and also to Okay, and um Bob Okay, I'm unmuted. Uh, I just want to <clears throat> ask a couple things. One was, you know, in my mind, one of the reasons we initiated our motion as early as we did was that we really value the council people's involvement and as uh uh, uh, Amanda mentioned, once it's a zoning that's filed, then you're done and council can no longer participate in the discussion. And I think it's an important discussion to have with the council people included. The other is I want to address something that Amy said, and perhaps Amanda was aware of it as well. Um, the uh, city planners architects, urban designers around the world are struggling right now with public spaces. With the rise in level of civil disobedience, of protests, of crime, elsewhere, public spaces could be a double-edged sword, especially big public spaces like this, which do not have roads that come through, which don't allow access to police, fire, and those kinds of things. And that's something else we need to deal with at a different level, is how do fire trucks get to these big buildings? You know, they're, they're sitting on a parking level pad. Do they go downstairs to turn off the water or turn it on? Or, but the big spaces that are left, unprogrammed or unpoliced or unmanaged, these are private spaces that really the police have limited response to unless a, a crime is called in or something. And it's not like the public right of way that they currently police for homelessness and all the other issues, but large public spaces or even smaller public spaces, uh, pocket parks and the like have become a problem. And so it may or may not necessarily be a benefit to your project and something we really considered thoroughly and have tried to impose were a road grid to, that mimics the, the scale of Cherry Creek North especially for the future of the mall. If the mall does go through, unfortunately, we have mixed ownership deals and we're not sure, you know, how do you deal with a leased piece of property? You know, uh, how do you deal with, with getting a road through it as we did with Clayton Lane, only if the developer and the owner agree to it, but they kept it as a private street, although it has public access. There's a whole number of issues that I think once we get into more detail, I don't think this is the place or the time to have a detailed review of your project, Amy, because I know that it, it's still a moving target. 
But uh, again, I extend uh, your welcome to attend any of our board meetings, as are any of any of you who choose to to join us. And maybe and, you could uh, make sure that everybody you know goes to this August first meeting, and that your your neighbor. We will certainly push it out. Um, I know we've all started getting postcards. I think they probably go to the country club historic they district. Do. But as well, I have as well, and I'm sure that others have as so, if they're in the loop. Let me just ask you, Bob, if if that's all about Country Club that you wanted to mention right now, because I would like to get on with the uh, get you know around the room. I agree. Um, <laughs> but if if you want to say something else, great. Um, I'm going to go to Brooks and then um, Brooks, if you could either pick up the ball and run with it on what's going on with Cherry Creek East, or throw it over to Bill or uh, Bill, <laughs> um, but please Brooks go ahead Brooks is muted Brooks you you need to unmute Brooks Brooks okay okay can you hear me now yes all right I just want to this has been on my mind for some time. Uh, I spent the morning with my granddaughter on the Cherry Creek Trail uh, with uh, Stuart Anderson and some others um, getting our bikes registered right at the location where Cherry Creek West would engage, so to speak, with the, with the uh, Greenway. But what I want to say is I think it's a really good time to pause and reflect on why the steering committee was formed to begin with. And I'd like to hear from um, those that were around when it was formed, um, from Alan, from, um, from Bob Fuller, uh, from Buzz Geller, from um, Larry Donovan, Anyone who remembers why, what the initial reason for forming the steering, the Cherry Creek Steering Committee was, which I think, and, and they can correct me if I'm wrong, but it was to work with the Buell Foundation on the eastern portion of their property to create a vision that was not only good for development, it was also good for the surrounding communities. And that mission has been there all along. Uh, the uh, shopping center was developed some years ago now, and things do change. Um, a lot of the things that we're all discussing about transportation, mobility, um, 15 minute walk distances, all these things are, are, are newer visions and good visions. But my point is really that it's time to re envision that whole parcel and that the Buell Foundation should be a part of that discussion because there may be things that have changed. And I understand how leases work. I'm certainly have worked in the business long enough to know how development works. But I also know how, how urban design is supposed to work and how community involvement is supposed to work. And I have some pretty strong feelings about this is the proper time to envision not only what happens on the West, but what might happen on the East, which I think Jeannie Robb touched on. So to have a larger discussion and to make it a vision for the future, if it's a 99 year lease, you know, you're thinking 99 years in the future. It's not just now, it's not just those issues that are affecting us right now, it's the way things change. And I recall, and I'm sure Alan and others recall, when they developed the plans for the shopping center, they, 
they made the decision to turn their back on the creek. That's where the, that's where the parking garages were envisioned. The front door was First Avenue and Steel Street. Well, that may have changed. I mean, we put a lot of money and time in over the years, and I've been involved in a lot of this and a lot of others on this steering committee have been to, to try to get a, a Greenway Foundation grant to get a vision for what that Greenway might be 25, 30, 40 years from now and how it might engage with the community. And I think that engagement is really important. And if you look at if you look at uh, shopping centers around the country, in malls particularly, and especially in urban areas, they're not doing that well. And then moving toward uh, mixed use development, housing incorporated with with the retail. And it may be a time to envision how that whole parcel relates to the creek. And what I saw, the last visions I saw, the last renderings that were presented uh, for the Cherry Creek West, they went from two lanes between the greenway and the development to four lanes. You know, I was there with my granddaughter this morning in that very position, getting our bikes registered, looking at that situation and saying, you know what? What would it be like for me to get my granddaughter across four lanes of traffic here? This is a missed opportunity. If this, if this West parcel doesn't engage with the creek, it's one of the few opportunities between here and the confluence for there to be an engagement. There's only one other downtown where the uh, old downtown CU center is. And even then you can't get down to the creek because of the wall. This is a, a, a this is an opportunity. And it could be an opportunity missed if we don't have a larger conversation. So that's that's my two cents for what it's worth. You can take it and run with it, or you can not. Lou, you're on mute. Okay, I'd like to move on. If just ask if Cherry Creek East has any other um issues that the rno is dealing with that they want to talk about a little bit um i bill you have your hand up yeah there is one other issue and i just want to introduce it here because we're uh, only in the beginnings of looking at it but as you know uh colorado boulevard is uh going to become a brt lane um and thanks to bill Howell for pointing all this out and alameda is also going to become a brt lane eventually uh, along with steel and parts of first. Uh, so we took a look at the uh, legislation that was passed, which says that a within a quarter mile of a BRT bus stop, uh, the properties next to that will be preemptively zoned uh, to, I think it's 13 stories, up to 13 stories. Um, and when you look at that map, Church Creek East essentially disappears. Uh, it's all covered by the BRT stops uh, in that area. And so there would be no part of Cherry Creek East uh, other than a tiny strip that would not be zoned uh, preemptively in 13 stories. Uh, can I ask, um, let me just ask Stuart, can you weigh in on that? Because that is not my understanding. If we have BRT down Spear, and certainly we, we've talked about not having it maybe go right through the Cherry Creek North area, but it doesn't preemptively rezone. It may have some impact on buildings that are trying to rezone without parking and so on, but it doesn't change our zoning. Stuart? Um, it's in Blueprint Denver, and I don't have the document in, me, in front of me right now to be able to respond, uh, but the intent was to increase densities along these enhanced transit corridors Mm -hmm. And um, there are actually three BRT lines proposed for our, our area. And um, one is Colorado, and that's moving quick. It's a CDOT project. The Spear First Leedsdale one, which we did a study on before, um, <clears throat> the ultimate, the Denver moves Cherry Creek, it looks like all they're going to do is recommend another study. 
um, for that one. But the Alameda one will come from, you know, my interest is in Alameda Station because we have a lot of people coming from that direction. The Alameda line would come up to university and then turn north and then join the line um, through First Avenue with the Spear Leedsdale line. So there are three separate lines and the desire through Blueprint Denver is to increase density, but I can't give you the specifics. Well, I think I can tell you though that you would that a developer would argue for increased zoning as a part of a rezoning application, but it, it won't automatically. But that is true. If we could look at, for example, the gateway properties up there, if somebody come back to us and said, "Well, now we're on this line, we want to go higher," and um, you know, those of you in development understand that that's a really tough site to do that, but it may be easier down on Bayot. We also know that we're going to have a, a transit and and um, pickleball over in that park across the street. So things will change, but wow. it it won't be automatic that Cherry Creek East is um, automatically upzoned. And these are things that we can have that conversation as a part of the BRT to say that certain areas which are um, already zoned mm -hmm. um, would maintain their zoning. So, I mean, it's a point well made, Bill. Um, there's um, there's a lot of property that may benefit for, mm -hmm. for example, the Bro project that you worked on on steel. Um, they've already agreed to their zoning. So, um, but it's it's a point well taken, and I think um, it's not a done deal as far as what it's going to look like on the Spear Leedsdale. Um, but I think it is a done deal as far as Colorado Boulevard. So um, it will allow developers to come back. But, you know, you think about um, coming down Spear, you've got historic neighborhood, historic country club, and you have the country club. None of those things are going to be um, up zoned to accommodate. Now, does that mean that in in those corridors that's going to change? Probably not. But there will be properties that that might be primed for, and it's time to really sit down and look at that. But it would it it does go to an analysis if if BRT is going to go through there that mall property, and again whether you have more density there and you can connect to the creek, which is what Amy was trying to do when she presented on the first time to really give that park connection. But my understanding that that was more shut down by the city rather than um, the developer. So again, I want to get back to neighborhood and I think that's a really good point, Bill. We all are watching that as a part of Denver Moves. It's still early in those discussions. And as Stuart, you know, we'll, we'll get down if we have time on the agenda but um but these are things to take as a combined analysis of what happens when we get better transit because blueprint already calls for spear lead style corridor to be the major major east west corridor mm -hmm. so yeah i just like to see what the uh what the what what was written you know what the plan is and what the specifics are uh, so I can react to that. We're, we're not at that point yet. I did send a, a copy of the map that we drew uh, to uh, uh, Council on Sawyer uh, and asked for, was this the city's intent? And got a response, yes, this was the city's intent. Okay, but is it exactly what's going to happen? I don't know, but I would like to, uh, I'd like to verify that and I'd like to make sure that we're on top of that because that obviously has along with uh, Cherry Creek West, a uh, really big impact on the area. Yeah. So um, I'm going to just, because it's a little after six, I want to make sure we hit some of these other neighborhoods because there it seems to be a lot going on. And I think um, um, I talked about Cherry Creek North right now and in, in our efforts, we have, we do have a lot going on in Cherry Creek North, obviously. 
Um, and we are trying to stick to our zoning in the bid. Um, so uh, we do we do have opposition filings made. We have uh, over 230 signatures on a petition so far that we've submitted to the city. We've asked the bid to uh, to stand with us. They have not. Um, they they've been supporting that to date. We did ask send a letter to Nick to ask him to uh, take that back to the board to reconsider and stand with the neighborhood. Um, um, but it's, you know, it's a lot of lift and we have a lot of people at the uh, Laurel, which is that 12 story condominium building and a lot of residents there, obviously very, very concerned um, about this. So um, that with that, um, I we've done Cherry Creek East, Cherry Creek North, Country Club. And I think Peggy, you had sent me and uh, an email and said you'd like to report for Chun. Yes, thank you, Lou. Appreciate it. Hi, everyone. Uh, Chun's going through a lot of transition right now, and I thought I'd be a nice time to report on things. Uh, I do want the last thing we did uh, participate in was with Denver Park Trust uh, in May on May 13th, and we combined efforts with the Denver Park Trust for a uh, park cleanup of Cheeseman. It was very successful. So that was really a nice event. But I do wanna let you know, we do have a new president of Chun. His name is Christopher Mansoor. He's a very qualified man. Uh, and he came to Chun recently in the last few months. He has 33 years of senior level government and relations experience in Washington, DC. And he served as chief of staff for the Michigan Democratic Member of Congress. And he has also worked as secretary of the interior under Ken Salazar. Uh, so we're really thrilled to have him. And then uh, you, I think all are familiar with Travis Liker, uh, last election, he no longer is with Chun. We had John Deppenbaugh, who was a terrific uh, executive director. He has now moved on to CEO of Historic Denver. So we're thrilled for him. So what the news is right now is that we are interviewing uh, actively a new executive director for Chun. And we look forward to having more conversations with you in the future, let you know what we're up to. Great. Thank you very much, Peggy. Um, yeah. Hilltop, um, I see Mary and Larry. I mean, who would like to take Hilltop? Larry? Mary? Um, well, Larry and I spoke. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to just run over some of the highlights, and then Larry's going to add in um, whatever I miss. So hope everyone's doing well. Um, being a little bit removed from Cherry Creek West, we're we're not in the heat of it like everyone else is. But I think that once there becomes more uh, definitive planning for us to react to, that Amy, we would love for your group to come and um, present with us and be able to to communicate. Um, you know, maybe some of the concerns or ideas, suggestions. Yeah, you know, it's very exciting. Um, and with regards to zoning, the other thing that we're keeping tabs on is the redevelopment of the VA site at the uh, Claremont and 9th Avenue. Uh, interestingly, it's similar size of what Cherry Creek West is. Um, there was the site is 12 acres, but the redevelopment component that is going to be peeled off from the VA parcel is eight acres. And um, right now it's in the large development review process with the city. There was a presentation on, I think it was June 8th. And um, interestingly, and what I'm very excited about to learn is it is gonna be an adaptive reuse. So uh, Oz Architecture is working on the project with GM development and a large portion of the existing hospital is going to remain. So I think from a sustainability standpoint, from a community standpoint, that it's it's looking very positive. But as they point out, it's at the very beginning of the process. You know, the large uh, development review process is very, um, I, you know, it includes a lot of city agencies and there's a lot of conversation, but it's at the very infancy of that development. Um, we also were tracking what Councilwoman Sawyer was doing with Mayfair in terms of potentially rezoning a large portion of that neighborhood for accessory dwelling units. Um, that was rescinded, and I, I don't think that's being pursued. 
Hilltop is is not zoned for accessory dwelling units, and so we're re we're reviewing it on a case by case basis. So that's just something. Again, we're we're in monitor phase, I think, in our neighborhood. Um, the church, there's not Larry and I don't really know what is going on with the church. We heard that maybe there was a development, there was an agreement with the developer um, in CDOT over a fence. I, I think that's kind of what we had heard was holding up um, that project, but we're not entirely sure on that. So if anyone has any information on that, you can share with us. That would be great. Um, one of the things that Hilltop has been talking about and probably in, um, is really on the forefront of everyone's mind is safety. There's just been a lot of incidences in our neighborhood that have been very concerning to the neighbors. And so Back in April, we had a special meeting with the Denver Police Department. Uh, Councilwoman Sawyers uh, was represented there, as were uh, Mike Johnston and Kelly Brook when they were both running. There had been some conversations about engaging uh, private security, similar to what Country Club has um, in place with some contracts uh, with, I think it's called uh, Guardian, Guardian Security. But at this point, that's not something that our board wants to engage with. So we're monitoring and seeing what a private neighborhood group is, is maybe trying to put together something. And we're just monitoring that situation because safety really is a big concern. We're a large area uh, bounded by very public streets, very active streets. And I think a lot of our concern is how, how would you monitor, you know, how would a security private security monitor, because um, anything can happen anytime, anywhere. Um, and then I guess the biggest news is uh, on a social front, the July 4th uh, picnic that we've had over the years is now uh, changing because of Glendale changing its fireworks. We can no longer see them. <laughs> They're below the tree line from our elevation at Cranmer Park. We're going to change that to a community concert with the Denver Municipal League Band um, on August 5th. So if people are interested in that and participated and came over into our neighborhood to enjoy that, um, that will be occurring on August 5th. Um, and also uh, a little bit of a follow up and change of staff, uh, change of our board leadership. Uh, Steve Pallet, who was the president of our association, he's moving away um, on because of some work. And Michael Hughes is uh, stepping back in as the president of our association board. And um, we'll see what happens next after that and who may take over when his position is up at the end of this year. Um, Larry, is there anything else that no, you wanna no, add? Not at this moment. Not at this moment. I think everything's rather copacetic, so to speak. Uh, we're just on the edge, and it, and um, so far, so good. That's all I have to say at the moment. You've covered everything. Thank you. Okay, great. Great, then, great report. Thank you, guys. It'll be interesting to watch that uh, development, Mary. So yeah, it's um, exciting. Well, there's you know there's just a lot of development going on around the city, and we're. Um, you know, kind of excited about all of it, frankly, and know that community input is really important. And, um, you know, with the commitment that we have of the citizens in, in our city, good things are going to happen. So it's exciting. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, and um, I think, Susan, you wanted Jeannie to give a report on 7th Avenue and, and that intersection. Yeah, just real quickly, I wasn't able to attend. So Jeannie was there, I believe. So, so quickly at 7th and Williams and High, along the historic parkways, the city bike infrastructure has put up 97 white posts. Some of them are yellow. There's also one no entrance. You can no longer go west on 7th Avenue from Williams Street. Um, and there are four no left turn signs. So it's been a real learning time for drivers and cyclists and pedestrians. Um, the neighbors are concerned because it seems like they've overdone it. 
we do want bike safety, but this is extreme. Um, there are also six, is, is Haley still on here? There are six um, traffic circles planned uh, between uh, Williams and Emerson or something. Everywhere, basically, that there's not a four-way stop, they're going to put a traffic circle in, which I've been trying to drive the way the street is chalked out. It really slows you down. Um, and, and of course, that's the purpose. Uh, I think the people along 7th who organized the meeting, um, well, to talk about the big meeting, there was a big meeting in Williams Parkway. A lot of people there, 50 at least. Um, and a lot of cyclists came and it was a very antagonistic meeting. It, it, I was sort of sorry about the whole thing. Uh, they seem to think that the 7th Avenue neighborhood did not pay attention. It's our own fault um, if we want input too late. Um, however, well, there really was no resolution from the meeting. They, they People took turns talking. And as I said, there was a lot of talking in the background. I do know that they're trying to get a meeting set up with Amanda Sawyer for, I think, July 14th, which is right before the transition. The neighbors would love to see the traffic circles put on hold. Haley, I, um, I have asked for maybe five years of tra traffic accident data um, so that we can just decide, is the cure worse than the problem? Um, and try to move forward with some consensus. I, I doubt if these improvements are long lasting, but I, I don't, I I really have no idea. Um, there are a lot of people who are unhappy. People from Alamo Placida, which is will soon be council district seven. People seem to call me because I live near there and I was once on council <laughs> and people were just calling and saying, why did this happen? Um, so that's um, that's where we are. And until there's a meeting, there was also an open records request the neighbors have done. And I was copied on it, but I'm no Dropbox pro and there are things that I can't open. So I can't tell you much about that, um, but to be continued. So my understanding, and we're trying to uh, delve into this as well, um, is that those posts are supposed to be temporary and that the city's goal will be to transition. First of all, you know, they're, they're, they put those up to get people used to it and to protect bikes or whatever, but that that will then become a raised curb and those will come down. Uh, timing, you know, cost, questions, um, Stuart is nodding. I'm gonna ask Stuart if he can weigh in on that just a little bit. You know, this is all about um, uh, Vision Zero and and safety issues. The intent with the majority of these little plastic sticks, which, you know, I think are, are horrible <laughs> looking as well, are to ultimately replace them with concrete or something comparable. So like the bike lanes that are designated by these sticks, the city's plan is to elevate what you'll call the cycle track by about three to four inches. So it's different from the roadway and that you would have an actual curb between the cycle track and the road. And that's my understanding. We we hope to get somebody, uh, Sam Sharp, I think I spoke to who has been involved in this. Sam Piper, maybe? No, uh, that's a different list, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, maybe it is Piper, right? Yes, Sam it is bad memory. Sorry about that. But um, to get somebody to come to speak to that particular issue, because I think there's been so much of a reaction, like all of us who drive down 7th, like, what? I don't know where to go. Um, and um, and yeah, it's like, wow, what is this? Even walking, you get a little like, you know, this was supposed to be a Zen walk and you're not. So, but I was um, assured that that was a temporary situation. So we'll try to let you guys know uh, if we are able to get that speaker at our August meeting. 
And uh, you might want to tune in on that piece of it. But it is something that I think people have complained about in lots of areas of the city where these have gone. Right. I, I frankly have never seen one intersection with 100 posts, but I don't get all over the city. I, I have some skepticism about the replacing it with something more attractive because the drain, some of the ways the lines are drawn, the whole drainage system of the street would have to be redone. Uh, curbs are not as simple as curbs sound. Buzz Geller knows that from putting curbs around in Country Club years ago. Um, and, and I also know that on an equity basis, very little money comes to a neighborhood like 7th Avenue. So I'm and there may the there may be other ways to differentiate that, like striping, I, painting, but right. we, we just what's need painted, more information. Yeah, what's painted on the ground is fine. Some but, of the cyclists tell me that it's not as sensible, but I'm not going to judge that. I'm not an expert. <laughs> well, um, let me just finish going around. Thank you very much for that. Um, I think that is one of the more concentrated um, areas where those have popped up. But um, again, I don't, I, I'm the same as you, Jeannie. I don't drive around and look at all of them. But you can see when you go downtown and you can see how some of those are getting replaced now. And, um, but it, it, it's such a learning curve and we have to understand really what the big picture is for this. And we all to also have to understand this, not just bikes anymore. There are scooters and there are people on those little skateboards with motors and all of these on the sidewalk, um, even right in front of my house, I was talking to a neighbor and all of a sudden somebody zooms by on a scooter and, um, and I was shocked. I mean, nobody announces anymore um, that they're coming up on you. So where are things supposed to go? Where are bikes and scooters and motorized modes of transportation that are really dangerous when they're going that fast? And um, where are they supposed to go? And how do we as a city accommodate them? Because they're, they're here to stay. And while I may not know how to use them, everybody younger than me seems to be able to do that. And we'll do that. So now it's a question of how do we keep the rest of us safe, keep them safe, and get people in a space where they can be expected and directed to be. Um, so I, that is, I mean, it's a really good point and we're, we'll get some, try to bring some more information and that might be a good thing to bring back to the steering committee. If I can get somebody to come to the steering committee on that, I want to do a quick check-in. It's already 620, um, a quick check-in, um, South, um, so Alan Gass, um, I know that your RNO is not really all that, um, uh, you know, organized, but I know you hey, did please. file for, did you file for, uh, I think you filed for um, historic designation. Did you get it? Uh, my house is officially a designated Denver landmark. Oh, congratulations. That's the way that it ought to work when the owner, who is the architect, does that for his own property. So congratulations. Well, and I didn't initiate the idea. This was initiated by by the uh, current members of Dacamomo. They came Good. to me and said, your house should be a landmark. And I said to them, you do all the work and maybe it will happen. But I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going through that brain drain. Well, and so congrats. They and they, congrats. they enlisted, they enlisted Michael Flowers from Historic Denver. And uh, it, he did most of the work, actually. Great. So, well, yeah, my participation was just just feeding them information. Well, um, good job. I know that was valued, and it's an honor um, for you. And um, very flattering, so, to say the least. <laughs> um, so, congratulations on that. Anybody Lou, else? Um, my neighborhood now. Uh, as of uh, July 17th, we'll revert back to District 6. So Paul Cashman uh, will be another uh, attendee at our meetings, I hope. 
and he has always invited um, and our, our neighborhood and, as you know is called Belcaro no my neighborhood is called Stokes Place Green Bowers Belcaro neighborhood was originally conceived uh, in its protective covenants as a white only neighborhood I could not have bought my site if those covenants had covered Stokes Place Green Bowers. Wow. Well, um, dismantling of, you know, structural racism in our city is way high on the agenda for the administration now. And I think going forward and, and uh, like I said, I was on a two hour equity and rezoning task force meeting earlier. Uh, they are talking about specific changes to zoning process for rezonings uh, that will advance more equity. And um, so I I will try to, I'm happy to update you guys on what I know. Um, there are likely going to be changes in the way that uh, for a small site, they're probably going to be bundled uh, rezonings. Um, there are some things being uh, discussed that um, that will hopefully bring some uh, some more opportunity to to right some of those wrongs. But and there and the but I think if Paul, no, Cashman, that's just that's just a comment, Lou. But uh, I, I had to get it out. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> um, that's my train of thought. We do have that rezoning coming along, uh, the Belcaro King Supers, right? Are you following that? Closely? Well, I, I'm following it, but I, I have no information. They apparently there's been a delay in the development of the, of the King Super site on the old uh, Department of Highways site on Louisiana. So uh, there's some kind of holdup. Meredith may may have some information, but I don't. Meredith, do you would you like to weigh in on anything south of the creek? And then we're gonna, I'm gonna pick up anybody else that didn't have it and give a two second summary um, through either Stewart or Bill on on Denver moves before we finish up here. Meredith, did you have anything you want to add? The only thing is, I had Paul contacted Paul Cashman's office and they confirmed that they were still moving forward, but I don't have any more information about the holdup. But they were still moving forward. Okay. Well, my thank you all for that. Excuse me. Um, my understanding is they're talking about developing that site with 230 units. Okay. So that, well, for the Belcaro. That's the Belcaro Shopping with, Center. Right. With retail on the bottom and residential above. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll, we'll um, hopefully um, have uh, Councilman Cashman join us and maybe give us an update at the next one, I can try to reach out to him personally or any of you in his district can. Um, I want to make sure if anyone else had anything they wanted to add on sort of their neighborhood stuff, we give that, but we only have four more minutes. And and um, unless there's something, I would like to have um, Stuart or Bill uh, report a little bit. Stuart, you want to start off and then Bill can give his uh, quick impression from the meeting we had. Sure. Just uh, quickly, I, my impression and personal opinion is we all need to lower our expectations of what this study is going to do. The bottom line is everything is turned down to the cheapest alternative um, that we get. There's not a lot of interest in investing in Cherry Creek. And the key, the absolute most important element, which was to figure out this BRT situation, is going to be deferred to a future study. So right. what we're gonna be left with, we're getting some good things. Um, you know, There'll be a bike path on, on Clayton that will go as far as ninth. Um, so that will help a lot of our cyclists get to and from the area. Um, there are little fixes here and there, um, but ultimately, you know, two parts of the equation. The traffic's already bad, but if you're concerned about zoning, you should be concerned about Parker more than Cherry Creek because that's what's pumping out, you know, people who are going to be driving 
you know, 100% of the time and they're going to come through the neighborhood. BRT is supposed to capture part of those trips and control that inflow of traffic, which is challenging. One thing I did want to mention um, with regard to Cherry Creek West is that, you know, don't assume that everybody's going to drive their car. Um, typically, a residential um, building in, in Cherry Creek will have at least one out of two people not driving their car. Um, and in workplaces, we can usually get eight, 80% of the service employees to use alternatives. I'm not saying that's a solution. I'm just saying keep that perspective as we look at, at density and things moving forward. I was not able to make the meeting, um, but I have had conversations with the project manager um, since then. Um, the city is recommending against microtransit for our area. In lieu, they want to buy up transit. Um, my big concern is how do we define that? Because right now I got a commitment from RTD that we're going to increase the frequency on the 24 as soon as they get some more money. And I certainly got it to the to near top of the list. I don't want the city to come in and pay uh, to get them to 30 minute service. I want the city then to take it from 30 to 15 minute frequency. Um, and so what is the guarantee that we're going to get? Uh, it's not going to be a dollar amount, but if we get set in stone, the city's going to ensure that we have 15 minute frequencies, that's a strong commitment. If we have a fluffy statement about the city supplementing RTD services, I'm not gonna put a lot of expectations into what that can achieve. My personal opinion is let's get this study done, get what we can out of it, and then build a relationship with the new administration and make sure that Cherry Creek gets its fair share of funding. I am so frustrated with how this area is treated. And I, not that I'm gonna <laughs> complain, I gotta just tell you one thing. We lost a grant and a neighboring program on the west side of Denver essentially copied our proposal for their area, exact same budget. They got funding, we got nothing. And we have the same types of needs that they do. And I'm so tired of this, but that's just my opinion. Well, we're glad you're at the table. Um, I will say I was at the meeting and I'm gonna give uh, Bill Allen the last uh, minute or two. It is 6.30, we won't go over very long, uh, but I do think that we discussed moving that, um, the bike lane into Cherry Creek North and there's been a lot of discussion. We really need a place for bikes to enter the neighborhood. People wanna ride their bikes to go have lunch, et cetera. And I think that's gonna be Detroit and not Clayton. Um, so stand by for some of those changes. Um, you guys saw, I gave you the materials that we had. I do think there will be changes to the intersection at first and Colorado, getting rid of those pork chops. We'll be talking about what that means in terms of gateways. And I do think as a part of, um, the Cherry Creek West and Denver moves, we'll be getting rid of those turn lanes, um, that go from university on to first. Um, they're very dangerous um, and I, I use it all the time and I probably drive faster than most people, but they're dangerous because you've got people trying to walk over. I mean, think about uh, when the farmer's market is in and stuff. So I do think some of those changes um, and certainly the changes that we wanna see in terms of better pedestrian protection, better pedestrian um, support and uh, bike bike lane enhancements. So um, I think those are top tier. I agree with Stuart. We haven't gotten a lot and we may need to look at a JID or, uh, a, you know, there are a lot of different options that we can start to explore at this higher level and figure out what options make the most sense but we need to get what we need to get from the developments that are coming in um, because um, they, they're a part of the need for this infrastructure. So it ought to be part of their cost of, of developing in the area. And um, so um, that's it. Bill, I'm gonna give you a, a couple of minutes just to add, share your perspective. Well, I too attended the meeting, so listen fast here, okay? 
Uh, number one, they want to recommend widening the Cherry Creek Trail to 12 feet. I think we'd all agree with that. The problem they're running into is the section from University to Downing, because it's uh, encompassed by the Cherry Creek Country Club. Uh, one of the things that they proposed was to take a lane out of uh, the street and put the bike on that. And I pointed out to them that they're already losing a lane to the BRT. That would make uh, First Avenue one lane wide. Uh, and of course, that would never sell. So they're going to go back and try and figure that out. But we would all agree that we need a 12 foot wide Cherry Creek Trail. Number two, they want to re energize the first and steel intersection to make it much more pedestrian friendly, make only three or four crossing points at that time. The way they're proposing it is that they would build an island on uh, First Avenue that would prevent people from going north on steel into the uh, Cherry Creek North area, that island would continue on to Adams so people couldn't cut through the neighborhood and uh, go north into Cherry Creek. Uh, so, but the overall idea is to make it much safer for pedestrians. And those of us who walk that area understand that that's a big deal. And uh, I'm all in favor of that, but we'll see if that survives. And last of all, they fully embrace the BRTs. Lou, we need to have someone come and talk to us about transit-oriented development because your view of it is different than what I've been told about TOD. TOD, as I understand it, presumptively allows rezoning. And that word is, I just want, I don't know if that's in the ordinance or not, but uh, that's the word that I've heard from developers. And uh, the TOD starts the minute the first shovel hits the ground. Dr. Cog is committed that by 2030, the Colorado Street BRT will be operational. So we'll see shovels in the ground soon. And that directly affects Cherry Creek North and Cherry Creek East. So in uh, lieu of time, that took uh, two minutes. Thank you. Oh, you did a really good job. Um, yeah, we'll take a, we'll look at this and we'll try to dig in. Um, I'll talk to Stuart about that a little bit. Uh, but my point is it doesn't automatically rezone. They still, there is a presumption they have to show all of these different things, but if the zoning stays the zoning until it is rezoned. And um, certainly there are uh, neighborhoods that the BRT will go through that uh, will be seeing change, but, um, but it will not impact um, other areas that are already uh, developed and for which the zoning was already implemented. But We'll we'll see about that. We can bring these um, these issues back. Um, I appreciate everybody's time, and um, we'll try to get some more information on these issues coming back on a consistent basis to the steering committee. Please email me if you've got any other thoughts, um, or if there's anything specifically you want to uh, bring up. In the meantime, we'll see you at the end of uh, July, July twenty sixth. And uh, and uh, I will try to get some more information on the bike lane information uh, or process. So with that, um, I'll wish you all a, a good rest of the evening. Thanks again for being here. Yep. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.